Soul Calibur 4. Fight! When Soul Calibur was released for the Dreamcast almost 10 years ago, it set a new standard for fighting games on home consoles. Subsequent entries in the series haven't changed much as far as the weapon-based fighting mechanics go, and they've introduced new features and gameplay modes with varying success. Soul Calibur 4 is no different in that respect. The fact that it's the first to have online play is a great addition, but while the visuals have improved and the gameplay has undoubtedly evolved, it still feels very familiar. If you're a veteran of the series, you're going to recognize most of the characters, but you'll find that some of their moves are different, and you're also going to have to figure out the new Soul Gauge system, which changes the gameplay somewhat in that it's no longer an option for you just to block, block, block all the time, because if you do that, Ultimately, you're gonna get punished because your soul gauge is gonna go red, which basically means you, you enter this mode called soul break where you're defenseless and the other guy can finish you with one move. If you're a newcomer, you don't need to worry about the fact that you haven't played with these characters before because they're all really easy to pick up. Once you know how to play one character, you can do reasonably well with any of them. If you're a big Soul Calibur fan, you're not gonna find a huge amount that's new here. Uh, and the really big draw is going to be that this is the first game in the series to have online play. Soul Calibur Force online play is great, not because it has a lot of modes to choose from, because it really doesn't. The, the options that you have, they're limited, but they do everything you need them to do. So you can choose, do you want to play unranked matches, or you can play ranked matches. The only other options you really get are, uh, do you want to use arcade mode characters or special characters? The only difference is that arcade mode characters are basically all playing on a level playing field. It's exactly as you would find them in the arcade, and the, the gear that they're carrying and the armor that they're wearing has no bearing whatsoever on the stats. When you're playing the special mode, you're almost certainly going to want to use a character that you've customized to some extent, or one that you've created from scratch. That's because it's possible to tweak these characters so that they really suit your playstyle. The great thing about the character customization is that you can make a character more specialized, but you don't actually make your character better. So like all fighting games, Soul Calibur 4 is definitely best played with friends, whether it's you know on your couch or online. Uh, but it does have some single player modes as well. There's an arcade mode, which is basically just a sequence of eight battles, and you unlock one or two new characters along the way. Uh, there's a story mode, which is kind of disappointing given the stories that have been in previous games. The best single player mode is the new Tower of Lost Souls mode, which basically tasks you with ascending this huge tower one floor at a time. And on every floor, it's like a mini survival mode because you have to take on multiple opponents, but you don't get to replenish your health in between fights at all. The other neat thing about the Tower of Lost Souls mode is that on every level, there are treasure chests to unlock. And you can only get those by fulfilling really specific criteria when you win your fight. Every treasure chest contains a piece of armor, which obviously you then get to use in character customization. All of the characters on the Soul Calibur 4 roster can be customized. Like, you're limited to using their fighting styles. But as far as their appearance goes, like, your imagination is pretty much the limit. The Star Wars characters, unfortunately, cannot be customized. In terms of gameplay, none of the Star Wars characters are a really great fit with the rest of the Soul Calibur 4 roster, but they're not so far removed that they break the game or anything like that. Darth Vader, for example, isn't that different to the rest of the guys on the roster. I mean, he, he uses a few force powers in terms of his size and his weapon. He, he's, he's a reasonably good fit. Uh, Yoda, on the other hand, is kind of crazy because he's, he's impossible to throw. Uh, and he's so small and he jumps around so much that he can actually just be really hard to hit. He's definitely a tough one to fight against, uh, but he doesn't use the force a lot and he isn't very fast, like when he's moving around the arena, so he, he's still reasonably well balanced, though he's not overpowered as such. The Apprentice, on the other hand, now that guy does feel overpowered. Not when you're using him and not in multiplayer, but when you encounter him in single player, he will almost certainly be the first enemy that, that really gives you problems, because he uses the force very liberally, he just throws it around. The fact that Yoda and Vader are exclusive to the Xbox and the PS3 respectively is easily the biggest difference between the two versions. Both games have an empty box on the Star Wars row of the character select screen though, so that's probably not going to be an issue once downloadable content comes out. 
You should definitely buy Soul Calibur 4. So which version are you gonna get? Oh, no.